Uh, thank you very much. Hi, all. I'm uh, Haruna Abdul, a student at the University of Science Malaysia, and um, under the kind of supervision of Dr. Professor Rosini Abdullah and uh, Dr. Muhammad Halim Muhammad Noor. And uh, my title, the talk, title of my talk is Elderly Activity Recognition, the Rural Area in, in Farkas. So, sorry. It seems like my, okay, my mouth. Oh, so the, the, basically what are human activities? You know, everybody knows that uh, human beings do perform some activities, a kind of integration or kind of independent activities. Just like, um, it can either be static, dynamic or transitional activity. So different activities are being performed by different individuals at different patterns. Uh, as a result of age category or health status, which made it difficult to have a kind of uh, comprehensive data set for all of the human activity patterns. Uh, looking at that, we, we deemed it important to take care on, uh, about the elderly people in rural area, because most of the existing researches do concentrate on a kind of uh, taking their data from the laboratories and most of these data sets are uh, not in natural settings uh, is being a kind of uh, control defendant. Uh, so the huge population that we're having in, uh, in rural areas cannot be cut down just like, uh, like that. So probably I'm trying to explain what are human activities. Uh, human activity uh, is a kind of, uh, there's a kind of method that identify what activity a human being is engaged at a kind of particular time, which has been classified into two categories. Uh, it can either be sensor-based or vision-based. And uh, most of the researchers had, uh, had clearly mentioned that sensor-based is more kind of uh, easy and uh, kind of much more important because vision-based uh, uh, can just strike through against the privacy, especially for the elderly peoples. So in our own case, we make use of this sensor base. Um, this slide is trying to tell us, uh, tell you why do we care about this, uh, why do we care to take, to talk about this research. Uh, if you look at this chart, uh, about 0 0.5 billion peoples in 1990 have been estimated by United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs to be elderly. And the population grows so fast in 2017, it will be 1 billion. And uh, looking at it approaching 2050, about 33 years in between, it, will, it has doubled and uh, plus some other amount above. And the way the French is moving by 2100, it should be about 3.1 billion. So cutting out this kind of population out of the big picture of human activity recognition, will be a kind of huge problem to, in getting the dreamed human activity recognition model. Uh, within which recently uh, the World Population uh, Project have predicted that one in six people in the world will be kind of 60 years of age and above off, that is with one from the last year. And elderly people in the rural areas are majorly not considered or like mostly ignored. Um, as a result of, I don't know um, the reason, maybe, but most of the times it seems like uh, all the data sets that are publicly available and those ones that are being hidden mostly are being collected from uh, the elderly people in the urban cities. And aside that, collecting data from elderly people in rural areas is very difficult because most of them cannot understand you like you are trying to attach something a kind of horrible to them like asking them to perform some kind of activities. So elderly people used to suffer from many kind of diseases, especially like Parkinson uh, diseases, cardiovascular disease, and some kind of ability to perform some kind of acti physical activities with which uh, make them vulnerable and uh, will need assistance all the time. So the best, uh, the great feature and the procedure of activity recognition in our own case here, uh, we put it in such a way that uh, uh, you need to have uh, collected your data first, and then the, the other process will follow. 
uh, the, basically the first thing we did, we have gotten some elderly populations, a uh, uh, very large number, uh, quite, the, uh, quite a number of uh, elderly people in a rural area. We collected the data and uh, different sensors can be attached to these uh, individuals or kind of elderly people or any person that you think is your subject or your target audience. But in our own case, we met case of elderly people in the Asian country, uh, countries and uh, we make use of independent sensors, wearable device to get the data from them, the sensors have been attached to the waist and uh, to the ankle, these two positions trying to get the best sensor position among these two people. And uh, after you got, we collected the data, we try to analyze, uh, the way we pre-process the data. Since the data has been gotten from only two sensors, uh, accelerometer and gyroscope, but many other researchers can make use of multiple sensors, which will, will lead to kind of sensor fusion or some other activities of such. And uh, after we pre-process the data to ensure the clarity and um, reduce the noise or eliminate it completely, then we segment the data into windows. Okay? Many people make use of some other method, but we deemed it important. Segmentation using sliding window is much better as uh, they are represented by different researchers. So what we did here, we chose the size of the window to be the two seconds with which it captured 100 samples per, per window before we go ahead and perform the kind of feature extraction. And uh, the next stage we did, we fit each and every window and uh, extract both the time and frequency domain data so that it, well, we can get the relevant feature vectors that we can supply to our model. And uh, then uh, finally, we got the probability of each and every single, uh, or each and every feature vector extracted from the indiv individual, uh, from individual windows that we have uh, already gotten the features. So, we, so, so that we can classify which activity has belonged to this. So to make it clear on improving the accuracy of our model, we uh, make sure that uh, the window, the peak sliding window have been like slide with a kind of 50% overlap. This is because any, most of times when uh, we fixed it and it's not overlapping, we get to know that a sensor data collected from elderly individuals is very noisy. And uh, then finally, this is a result that we have so far gotten by testing the data we have collected from uh, using different, uh, four different machine learning and classifiers uh, with, with the results is showing that K nearest neighbor has the highest accuracy level in both the data collected from two different positions with which the sensor attached in the waste position have like 97% accuracy and uh, the one in the ankle have an 83. In both cases, it has shown that waste position capture much more acceleration in elderly people from the data we have uh, gotten. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Maruna. Uh, any questions okay. from the audience? Okay, cool. A quick question for you. So, um, okay. So what's the next step in, uh, along this line of research? Yeah, the next step is that we now focus in uh, capturing the elderly people in the rural areas in Asia. And uh, our next target is to get from another continent in Africa to see what the kind of uh, the differences, if it has a kind of huge differences. So it's much more advantageous to like try some other continent so that it will be put in the big picture of human activity recognition model. Because cutting out this kind of thing is not representing. And uh, those people in the rural areas are much more vulnerable and um, they are having a lot of health issues. And the population is increasing and they don't care about mostly the, if they are sick or something else. And they tend to be look older than their ages most of times due to the environment they are living on the some things like that. Cool. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, thank you for attending.